Welcome to Revangelical, Rethinking Christian Living, a podcast that aims to encourage, challenge, and equip Christians in their daily walk with Christ. Join us as we discuss scripture, theology, the issues of the day, and uplifting stories from folks just like you. Here's your host, Danny Forshee. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome uh, to our Revangelical podcast. Uh, my name is Danny Forshee. And I'm delighted to have you join in with us uh, here today. This is episode 224. Uh, Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Uh, 224. Wow. Here at DFEA, our mission is to share messages of hope and an inspiration and encouragement uh, from the Word of God. So we are currently uh, in a series called Family Goals. And this is my wife, uh, Ashley Forshee, of almost 35 years. I know, 35 years. Wow. Wow. (laughs) <laughs> 35 years. That's a long time, mm. but it's um, it's awesome. God's mm. been so good to us and our kiddos and That's our family. Right. And thankful. so we just, what's that? I said very thankful. Very yeah. thankful. Amen. Yeah. So we just wanted to create these uh, episodes uh, just to be a source of encouragement, some inspiration, maybe some hope for those of you in your marriages or in your parenting skills or your extended family. Uh, dealing with the different dynamics that we deal with uh, in family life. As we talked about last time, the family is God's idea. It's God's creation, the marriage uh, unit of a husband and a wife and children, and it is a beautiful thing. And so we're just delighted to be able to come alongside you and share with you some some things that we believe that God has put on our hearts and some things that we've tested and tried, (laughs) things we've done well, things we've not done well, And so um, today we're going to talk about in this episode, again, this is the third of a series, is dealing with conflict. And so we're uh, going to talk about dealing with um, difficulties or some things that may arise along the way in our marriages or in our parenting with our children or just however the Holy Spirit leads us to encourage you to talk uh, about dealing with these things called conflicts. You know, Ashley, they they Mm -hmm. come up. Yeah, they do. No perfect family. Right. Uh, there's no perfect parents mm. and or spouses. So why don't you start us off and just share some initial thoughts that you have in dealing with uh, families and conflict? Okay. Well, you know, first of all, I just would have to say that, um, you know, we're all unique. Mm. We're all one of a kind. <laughs> and, you know, when you think about that, it's like, I think about in your own opinion about things and how you feel about things. It's like, you got to realize, okay, your spouse, or especially I'm talking about here more like with me and with mm-hmm. me and you, is like, you know, you also can have a different thought or different idea, yeah. you know. And so I think we have to recognize that is like, okay, he, we're not the same person, yeah. and so you need to be respectful yeah. of, you know, recognizing that they are going to, you're going to have a different thought or different opinion. And so, uh, you know, I just think it's important to, first of all, to recognize that, and yeah. also to recognize, I think, um, and I think about just conflict is that, um, you know, and especially with your spouse, this is the person you choose, you chose to spend the rest of your yeah. life with. Yeah. This is a, you know, y'all had, we had things that we believed in and were common goals. And mm-hmm. so with that, I think when we get in that mode of, you know, thinking that, okay, my way is the right way or whatever, it's yeah. like, give your spouse a break, you know, or it's like, you know, and and you have to be mindful of that, I think, because he's not perfect. I'm not perfect. But you know what? We can come together and, you know, and talk about things and work through things. And, you know, I think about in our own life. I mean, I have to say we're, I'm very fortunate because, you know, most, Danny and I, over the years, we really Mm -hmm. haven't argued a whole lot. But I, Mm -hmm. I will also say that Danny is very good about, asking me questions and trying to get it out of me. I would say, especially when we were first married, I, yeah. I probably was one that kind of kept it more inside a little bit, and yeah. but also wanted to be real careful what I said and yeah. how I would say it. And so, but in doing that, sometimes I could probably hold it in too much. Mm. Yeah. And so, and I think, you know, after being married almost 35 years, we've just learned, mm-hmm. you know, um, to have that open communication and, and work through it. And, you know, and sometimes I think you can go for a while and, you know, you can kind of uh, um, revert back sometimes to, you know, really the way maybe, again, for me, it would be probably 
keeping it to myself a little more, mm. and you would have to pull it back out of me or whatever. And so, yeah. you know, that's what, you know, again, I'm just thinking that um, it's just a cool thing how God puts people together, and, yeah. and we're not the same. Right. We are different, and so you work at it together. Um, you know, I think some of the things I think about— Go ahead. I can tell you one. No, no, I was just yeah. thinking about the the little statement yeah. you've heard. It says, opposites attract, mm. and then they attack. And <laughs> Unfortunately, mm. there's some truth to that. Uh, and yet, like you said, you know, we all— we bring our mm. different personalities to the table. We're not the same, um, you know, we, but we come together and with Christ in the center of our lives, Absolutely. you know, and, and we love each other unconditionally and strengths and weaknesses. And uh, and we, you know, you manage and some mm -hmm. seasons are easier than, than others, but communication yeah. is key. So. Yeah, absolutely. And I just, like I said, I just know that's so important. And, you know, and just like Danny said, I mean, I'm so thankful because I, I do think for us, you know, we did have that strong foundation of having the yeah. Lord as number one that started. And I know Critical. one of the earlier episodes, we talk about that, how with God being the number one, and then with each of us pursuing God as first, then it also can help you in how you choose to go into conflict. Yeah. And I do also realize that when you're, especially I think about you're younger in your marriage and you're younger just in age in general, is sometimes yeah. things can be very heightened. And, yeah. you know, it's like, <laughs> wow, this is such an important issue and I yeah. need to stake my claim. And, yeah. you know, and I'm right. Mm -hmm. You know what? I found that, you know what? Even though you might be right, but if you say it in a way yeah. that is not very kind or demeaning mm -hmm. or yeah. something like that, then it really doesn't matter if you're right or not. Yeah. Because you, it, you know, and, you know, I can just see where that can be. Sometimes strong-willed personalities can be that way. It's like, you know, they're com you're coming yeah. together. and You can be right and wrong at the same time. Right. You know, right in what you Yes, you know, or saying, but in the attitude in which it's said. And, yeah. and a lot of times I think young married couples are— you know, they're, they just feel the need. They have to defend themselves and speak yes. up every time. And through the years, you're like, that, that really doesn't matter as much, you know, just kind of let it let it go. So Exactly. And I think that's what, you know, we've kind of, that's one of the things I, even with raising kids, I think about is yeah. like, you know, when, especially, you know, you think about your first child compared to your oh, third wow. child. Um, you know, I think about with our daughter, Hannah is like, I mean, I had everything so precise and this is the way we're going to do it. And, you know, the discipline and, and what was expected. And then at the time the third one comes, I was like, you know, that's really not that big of a deal. It's not that big of a battle, you know, and it's right, like, right. you got to figure out what yeah. really is important. Yeah. And um, now I would say you need to be consistent with, you know, come up with conflict with your kids or whatever. Yeah. Be consistent in your, you know, discipline. But also I would say just some things aren't that important, right. whether it's in your marriage relationship or with your kids. Yeah. It's like figure yeah. out what's really the most important yeah. and then be strong on those when the other one's yeah. You got to let it go. Let it go like in choose, Frozen. <laughs> choose it. Let it go. Choose your battles. Exactly. You know, wise. Don't have to fight. Everything doesn't have to be a big war, a fight. And, mm. and I think that comes with time, you know, maturity and growing in the Lord, growing in your relationship wow. with each other. Yeah. Very good. Anything else on that? Well, and you know what I also was just going to say is that how important it is to accept it, to acknowledge when you are wrong, yeah. to say you're sorry. Yeah. You know, I mean, it goes a long way. Now, you have to be careful again. I mean, always, I mean, it's very important to say you're sorry, but I always go back to be careful what you say yeah. because those words, once they're out there, they're out there. Yeah. You can be forgiven, mm -hmm. but it's, you know, in the other person's mind, it's still there. Now, God will mm -hmm. forgive you and it's, you know, it's gone. Yeah. But, you know, when you are in a relationship, day-to-day -day relationship with your spouse or whatever, just be so careful. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll go on and share that. Um, sure. The scripture Absolutely. verse that, yeah. you know, was just so, such, a, I think God just put it on my heart. Um, even with our kids at a young age, it's like, you know, our, our kids were, Hannah's and Brian are 22 months apart and Brian and Layton are 18 months apart. And mm -hmm. so, I mean, they're just together and you know, close in age, and we just did a lot of things together. And so there was a lot of, uh, you know, <laughs> um, fun times, but a lot of, you know, the kids being kids. Yeah. And so the scripture that really just meant a lot to me over the years, and, and I would make them say it over and over again, and y'all probably have heard this one. It's uh, the Ephesians 4, 29. But I, I, and I'm going to read it, but I also like the rest of those verses because I think it's so important what the rest of it 
says. But this is the one that we I would I would tell my kids. Okay, when when y'all are arguing and stuff, it's um, Ephesians four twenty nine. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. Mm-hmm. So this is def- this was for my kids, but it's also, I mean, that's definitely also for your yeah. for your spouse. I mean, it's yeah. so important to be careful what you say mm-hmm. and how you say it. But this is the rest of it, and especially as a Christian, um, and then it goes on in verse 30 and says, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Yeah. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Mm -hmm. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as in Christ Mm -hmm. God God forgave you. So it's, I do think it really does help, you know, like I said, with Mm -hmm. when God is your first, you know, and he's the most important, and then in like your relationship with your spouse and your kids, and, mm-hmm. you know, you you want to make sure that your relationship with the Lord stays open. Yeah. And, you know, like I said, as a Christian, you can't break the relationship, but you can break your yeah, fellowship. Sure. Yeah. And so that would be something I would encourage you as with your with your spouse and with your children being yeah. careful and recognizing when you're wrong, admit it. That's good. And so, anyway. That's very good, dear. Mm. I, I think about somebody may say, well, why even talk about, you know, bringing up conflict? Because mm. it's real. It is real. We deal with it. Every There's no perfect marriage That's or family. Right. And so, uh, especially as followers of Christ, we are going to be pursuing mm. the Lord, be different from the world. We have an enemy that hates us, that hates our marriages, and our families, try everything in his playbook to try to derail us and hurt us. So Ashley and I are just coming alongside yeah. you today, and we're just hoping to build you up and exactly. bolster your faith, encourage you and your communication skills and your patience and your forgiveness and your understanding. I think about, you know, the love languages, Ashley, mm. and how important that is to know your spouse's love language or even your children's Absolutely. love language. Of course, talking about Gary Chapman's wonderful book, The Five Love Languages, and understand, you know, how the other one thinks Thinks and how you might be able to speak life into that area and maybe avoid uh, some some other areas. You know, Ash was talking about some keys to, to our success. I wanted to say, gentlemen, let me give you a great word of advice. Yes, dear. That is, uh-huh. that's gold. Just be, <laughs> say, yes, dear. And uh, that'll go, that'll go a long way. Mm. Um, so, Let's see. Conflict, um, I think, arises oftentimes from selfishness. Mm -hmm. You know, Ashley touched on that a little bit. We want our way, and if we don't get our way, then there'll be havoc. And that really is the the opposite of what Scripture compels us to do, because the Bible is very clear about putting the other person's needs above our own. Uh, You know, being humble, um, Mm -hmm. being careful. You know what what we say. I love the passage in Philippians, Ashley. If you want to read it, it's Philippians 2, 1 through 4. I think some great principles here for us as families on how we can treat one another and overcome some conflict. Okay. All right. It says, Is there any encouragement from belonging to Christ, any comfort from His love, any fellowship together in the Spirit? Are your hearts tender and compassionate? Then make me truly happy by agreeing wholeheartedly with each other, loving one another, and working together with one mind and purpose. Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble, thinking of others as better than yourselves. Don't look out only for your own interests, but take an interest in others too. That's just so good. That's just the Word of God, just basic principles. We had that kind of mindset. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, I think about early on in our marriage, if I had a better concept and understanding of that, Mm. I would have done better. I would have been careful, Mm. you know, what I say. I've been more, um, you know, more patient and 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 kind. So Mm -hmm. there's some unhealthy ways to deal with conflict, uh, whether it's our marriages, our families, at work, in our neighborhood, relationships. And so I'm going to give you just a couple of, two or three, four um, unhealthy ways to deal with conflict. Number one is to avoid it Mm -hmm. and just hope that it goes away, and it rarely does. That's right. If you just try to to, to bury it, it's kind of like a a, a dead animal, and you just bury it in your backyard, <laughs> you put a little bit of dirt over it, it's going to stink. I mean, it's going to mm-hmm. come back out. So avoiding it is not the best and the healthiest way to do it. And you say, mm-hmm. well, that's where I need help, Danny. I 
anytime I try to bring up something to my spouse, it just blows up and it, and it just goes in a, in a bad way. So I just think I'll suppress it and avoid it. And I would encourage people at that point, Ashley, is to, is to get help. Yeah, you have someone, that's true. a counselor, exactly. someone can help you walk through these these landmines. Yeah, another one's kind of similar to it is suppress it. Again, it's it's not healthy because it will come back up, and usually the next time it comes up, it's no longer a molehill. This thing's a mountain. Now, you ever heard the statement? Oftentimes, it's the problem mm. is rarely the problem. Yeah. You know, it's a symptom, right? But what's going on underneath is is the hurt and the previous mm. uh, offenses. So couple of unhealthy ways. Number three, deny it. Pretend conflicts and problems are not real. Mm. <laughs> Again, it's that monastic burying your head in the sand and just saying, I just refuse to, to deal with it. But this last one is, is one that I see, unfortunately, I see it so often, mm. and it's called blow up. And blowing up is uh, the one where families uh, just they get so angry. Mm. And, and to deal with conflict, they just use this... Um, uh, I guess it's almost a form of manipulation, raising your voice and mm. screaming and pounding your fist. And unfortunately, and we see this oftentimes in domestic violence yeah. situations where there's physicality going on. It's so, so sad. Mm. You know what breaks my heart on that, Ashley, is when that happens in families between husband and wife, of course, the children see that. Yeah. And that's probably the way they're going to treat their spouses but also how we treat, uh, you know, our children. If we if we blow up and just are angry and like dynamite, and people are walking around on egg eggshells, it just creates a really unhealthy atmosphere. Mm. Last week, Ashley and I were in uh, Florida, and we were attending a conference. And the first day of the conference, I had to miss because I thought I had COVID. I hadn't been tested <laughs> yet, and I started coughing, and my back was hurting, mm. and my head was hurting. And I was like, man, this is terrible. And so I had to miss the whole day of the conference because I needed to go get my COVID-19 test. And Ashley, I just appreciate you. Mm -hmm. She she just stopped what she was doing. I mean, she was going to spend the day, you know, having, having fun, no shopping around a little bit. She spent the whole day with me, just mm -hmm. helping me get to the clinic, get tested. And I think it's when you maybe walked off to the store by yourself a little bit and there was a family there. And I... Mm -hmm. And I just felt so bad for this family. It was a, it was a mom and a dad and two small children. Mm. They're from New York, and they had to get their COVID test yeah. uh, because of their travel. And the mom talked to me a little bit. She said, yeah, if we get our test and it's negative, we only have to quarantine in New York four days. Wow. If we don't get the test, we yeah. have to quarantine for 10 days. Well, mm -hmm. they were already getting a little impatient. The kids were getting a little... Um, you know, a little fidgety. I mean, yeah. they're probably 10, 11 years old, six and seven years of age. It's a husband and a wife and a brother and a sister. And I could tell the dad was just getting angry and more angry. And then when they walked away, uh, as they were walking toward the store and I was still at the clinic, I heard the dad, he was probably 100 yards away. Mm. He whipped around and he just started screaming mm. at his son. Mm. And my heart just broke for yeah. that boy because I, and then the mom quickly went to her son's side, you know, yeah. was trying to help and console him. And I just thought, man, mm. that's just not the best way to deal with conflict and to deal with difficulty, just blow up or scream. And, and I think that mm. that there's a good probability that that little boy will, he'll probably mm. do that. And when he mm. grows up in his own marriage and with his own children. Okay. Enough of yeah. the negative. Yeah. How, how maybe some positives? Let me let me talk about right. some positives on how to deal uh, with conflict. We, we're talking about the husband wife relationship. We're talking about dealing with our with our children, how to speak uh, to them and and to be compassionate and kind. Take the high road. And you know, again, I just mm. I just think about it. All goes back to that relationship with Christ. Yeah. When when we're walking with the Lord, filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh, we're we're going to deal with every situation in a much better, wholesome manner. Mm. So, number one, I would say healthy ways to deal with conflict. First of all, is pray. Mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> Talk yeah. to God immediately about it. Right. I've never regretted talking to God first. Mm. You know, just kind of take a deep breath. You know, and just say a prayer. Yeah. And before we speak to others, our spouse or our children, mm. just just take a moment and just gather our thoughts and ourselves and and pray. Number two, when we do speak, speak calmly and from mm -hmm. a place of 
humility and a place of peace. Proverbs 30, 32 says, if you have been foolish in exalting yourself, or if you have devised evil, put your hand on your mouth. <laughs> Isn't that good? Mm. Put your hand over your mouth. Because most of the time, when, when the conflict goes to an unhealthy place, it's going to come out of our mouth. Mm. And that's what you were saying earlier. It's kind of like the toothpaste. Yeah. Once it goes out, you, you can't quite right. get it back in. And, and those words linger and they haunt us. And so that's mm. an unhealthy way to deal with it. A healthy way is... Just say, I'm not going to say anything. Yeah. Number three, put the other person first mm. and think the best of them and, and not uh, not the worst of them. Ashley mentioned that earlier. Mm. And the last one I would say is just seek to understand first and then seek to be understood. Yeah. I really like that. Yeah. I think that's really, yeah, I like that too. I never yeah. thought of, I mean, somebody said that recently, mm. seek to understand and then seek to be uh, understood. Anything along those lines? I think, you know, like what you're saying, uh, uh, well, to listen to somebody else's point of view and, and be willing to listen. Yeah. Like you said, I know you've said before, we've got two ears and yeah. one mouth and yeah. just to listen to somebody's heart. And, yeah. you know, one of the things that I'll, you know, I'll just share, we had a, a situation, you know, as a Christian and need to say this, you know what, we make mistakes. And we definitely need to, you know, recognize those and apologize. And, you know, had a situation where we should have prayed before. Mm. This is a, you know, just a, a extended relationship, and you know, and it just didn't go well. The mm. the whole situation. And I look back on it, and I'm just like, I think for one thing, it was late at night. Mm. And I always tell this is one of the things, Danny, and I really try to do. If it's something really, really important that we need to discuss, yeah, don't. I mean, unless you can do it and handle it, good for you. But I would say most people are like, you're more tired. Yeah. You can't think as well. Yeah. You know, there's um, wait until you have a better yes. time and you're in a better frame of yes. mind to yeah, be able absolutely. to talk about things that are really important. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so, you know. What would you say after 9 o'clock? Oh, my word, yeah. Don't even, don't even bring it up. Yeah. Because I mean, you're this, tired. You, exactly. It's probably not going to come out really well. Yeah. But it's amazing. Now, the enemy wants you to oh, talk about it. absolutely. Fight about it argue about it. But if you just say, you yeah. know what, let's just pray and let's talk yeah. about it in the morning. Yeah. It's a totally different conversation. And, you know, I think, and if you think about it, how many times that you have had a conversation late at night, late at night and it hasn't gone well. Yeah. And then you think about the next morning you woke up and you're like, wow, did we really have that conversation? And it yeah. just, was it blown way out of proportion yeah. than what it really was? Mm -hmm. And so then you have to go back and you apologize and things mm -hmm. like that. So, you know, but like you said, the devil is so yeah. manipulative, yeah. and he is always waiting for your moment of vulnerability or, yep. you know, and so when you're not thinking the way you should be thinking, and then that's when he likes to oh, wow, can you believe they said that? Or <laughs> can you believe they did that? And it's no. like, oh, you know, you definitely need to share your opinion and, yeah. you know, have it be made known. No, you don't. Mm -hmm. You know what? I mean, it's just like, especially, I know, like we were saying is, you know, just to take the time to, one, to, especially like with family and, you know, and your spouse and your children, mm -hmm. it's like, this is the persons, these are the people you, especially with family, you love the most, most and you yeah. don't want to hurt them. Mm -hmm. And so, and words, you know, words matter. I mean, you're talking about in Proverbs, there are so many scriptures Absolutely. in Proverbs and it talks about the mouth and being careful what mm -hmm. comes out of your mouth. And yeah. so I just encourage you, and I don't want this all to be, it's positive in that yeah. if we think about that before we go into a conversation, it's yeah. like, Think about, okay, I'm going to be careful what I say. I'm going to pray, number one. Yeah, and if we really will do yeah, that, yeah. it really can kind of, diffuse you know, it. diffuse. Yeah, and so, so true. Uh, I appreciate you, wife. Mm. That's what I call her, wife. I know <laughs> people have words, terms of endearment. Uh, okay, so talking about the, mm. the marriage relationship here yeah. for a couple of minutes, uh, I found that through our own relationship and mm. through listening to other couples, there's usually a couple things that, that bubble up to be controversial, and it's usually sex and money, okay? Mm. I'll just I'll just say it. Um, those are the two areas that, um, you know, that you have to really work through. Yeah. And I know we have as well. Yeah. As far as the first one, sexual relations with your spouse, the Bible says in Hebrews 13, 4, marriage is honorable among all, and the bed is undefiled. But fornicators and adulterers, God will judge. Mm. Um, so I know with, with Ashley and, and me, we— um, it's kind of funny because my wife, she 
goes to sleep really quick at night. <laughs> we, we'll be watching TV, and we always pray together. And um, <laughs> even last night, we prayed. We watched a little bit of The Good Doctor. Uh, yeah. I think we, you didn't make it, I did didn't you? make no. it. No, I, I looked over did. there. She was gone. <laughs> a lot of times, we joke with each other, and I'll start uh, counting 10, 9, 8, and just say, stop, stop, because in 10 seconds, she'll be out. So our best time for intimacy is not going to be at <laughs> 9, 10, 11 o'clock. So you got to work it out. You got to right. find out when your best time would be. And for us, it's other times besides <laughs> <laughs> nine. How's that? That took us yeah. a while. Yes, it did. To figure that out. Right. And so we kind of, you know, work through that. And you communicate with one another. You know your spouse. Yeah. And you know their love language. And um, and I know I've talked about that a lot, mm. love language. And, and it's... Um, you know, it's important. I mean, yeah. mine's words of affirmation, physical touch. Ashley's is acts of service and quality time. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, again, you, we're talking about overcoming obstacles, yeah. overcoming discouraging, conflicting issues. So we talk about sex a little bit. What about money? Mm -hmm. You know, money's a big deal. Yeah. And couples come into the marriage relationship mm -hmm. with different convictions and thoughts about money. Some are mm -hmm. very inclined to save all they can. Some are more inclined to, to give all they can. Some are more inclined to just spend it, mm -hmm. you know, ho however they would, um, that they choose to. Uh, I was thinking about um, Ashley and I were, were traveling just a few weeks ago. We were in uh, Colorado and we were traveling uh, to Arizona. Uh, yeah, Arizona. Yeah, that's right. Um, it's close. I know. It is close in the <laughs> geography, isn't it? But we were driving down the road, and, and we were listening to a Carrie Newhoff podcast on, um, remember Rachel Cruz yeah. Yeah. was being interviewed by Carrie Newhoff. Her dad is Dave Ramsey, mm. and they were talking about money yeah. and how some are more inclined to, to save. Others are more inclined to spend. And I really like that book. In fact, I wrote the title of the book down. It's called Know Yourself know your money. Mm. And it, like I said, it, it really just helps couples and just understand more about money and how, what they think about it. Because come on, it, it, I think most couples deal yeah. with that, that yeah. they deal with the struggle, you know, mm -hmm. with how to treat money. And it oftentimes can come up the financial disagreements. And so, I don't know, just want to send that out to you. Maybe it helps somebody. Yeah, I agree. So I think it's just good. I know we've had to work through that over the years. Uh, you know, of course, being the mama and uh, with the kids, you know, sometimes I would have a tendency, you know, just probably to spend more than necessarily should. But Danny, he would help me and uh, we would work through it. And so, and I appreciate it. He always was kind. And so well, most of the time. <laughs> I'll say to your, your point is, you know, I could be to the point of just working hard and saving mm. and not having fun. And so Ashley's mm. like, you need to lighten up. We need to go spend some money. And I'm like, okay. you know. And so, mm. and it, it works, you know, we yeah. kind of bring the, each other to the center and, and balance one another out. So yeah. overcoming conflict, this has been fun. Yeah. And I'm grateful to God that he's, um, you know, that he's mm. helped us so much. And I hope some of the things we've shared today has helped others. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, I, I just want to say one thing yeah, back sure. to the, uh, to the, the whole thing with the um, with couples, and I know you you touched on it, but also mm -hmm. it's, it's so important. Like if people are really going through very difficult conflict, there is n do not feel bad if you uh -huh. need extra help. Yeah, go to counselors. Yeah. You know what? And I'll just say, and it's really kind of cool. And it, you know, both of our two of our um, kids before they got married, they went to and and a lot of times I, th I do realize people go to Christian counseling and are counseling before they get married. Mm -hmm. But they've con I mean I, I know um, mm -hmm. one of them definitely has continued on because sometimes you just need a little you need a sure. third you know sure. opinion that doesn't um, yeah. you know that's not biased in any way. And yeah. so there is nothing wrong with that. A lot of times it's good. It's just healthy. Yeah. So one of them. Yeah, so cool. dear couples in the church. Oh, absolutely. They, uh, they yeah. have a great marriage. Yes. They go to counseling. Yeah. And they're like, well, a lot of it's preventative. Absolutely. You know? and so I, I'm glad you brought that yeah. up. And so there's no shame in that. Absolutely. Um, having Christian counselors help you yeah. through some difficulties or maybe even some some maintenance and some right. preventative things. So yeah. great. Well, thanks okay. again for listening. Yeah. And uh, we look forward to next week as Ashley and I will seek to uh, give some answers to some of your questions that you gave us on social media, dealing with the family. A lot of people uh, think asking God questions mm -hmm. is a sign of weak faith, but 
I'm telling you, there is nothing could be further uh, from the truth. That's I love right. to ask questions, and I love to— Amen. God gives me the grace and strength. I love to be able to try to help give answers to the questions that people are are asking. Mm. God welcomes our big questions about life. Um, I'd love to encourage you with his answers by sending you a seven-part series that I did called Explore God. Mm. And you can find out how to get your copy at dfea.com. Again, it's dealing with some of the big life questions. Is God real? Uh, is the Bible really the Word of God? What do we do about pain and suffering? And so we make those available to you there. You can support us at dfea.com and get your uh, copy of the series. Well, thank you again so much for listening to us on Revangelical. I want to say a quick prayer for you and for us. So, mm-hmm. dear, let's pray together. Mm-hmm. And, Father, we thank you so much for each person uh, that has listened to our episode today about dealing with uh, conflict and overcoming these obstacles, Lord. Mm-hmm. I just pray in Jesus' name that marriages would be helped, encouraged, mm-hmm. that parenting skills, Lord, would be sharpened, and that, God, you would bless and bless these dear couples that are listening. Bless our single adults. God, thank you for them and their passion for you, and they're waiting for you to send them uh, the person that you have for them. So we just pray, God, for peace and joy, and it overflow to each person who has listened in today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Thanks for listening to Revangelical. We hope today's episode has edified and enhanced your walk with God. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter. We'll see you next week.